Hello class, welcome back. Today, we're going to look at the poem Richard Cory by E.A. Robinson. First, I'll read out the poem for you and also give you some kind of an analysis to understand what exactly the poem is dealing with. As I told you, Richard Cory was published in Robinson's second collection, Children of the Night. And this particular poem packs a dramatic surprise. Let me first read this for you. Whenever Richard Corey went downtown, we people on the pavement looked at him. He was a gentleman from soul to crown, clean favored and imperially slim. And he was always quietly arid and he was always human when he talked but he still fluttered pulses when he said good morning and he glittered when he walked. And he was rich, yes, richer than a king and admirably schooled in every grace. In fine, we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. So on we worked and waited for the light and went without the meat and cursed the bread. And Richard Corey, one calm summer night, went home and put a bullet to his head. As you can see, what the poem does is to describe Richard Corey from the point of view of one of the onlookers. He is described as a much admired gentleman who is good looking, who is well dressed without ostentation at all times. And always humble in his interactions, even with much poorer people. He had no reason to wish them good morning otherwise, but he did. He is also described as richer than a king. And so he is at the same time an object of envy for these people. Who are these people? We hear one representative voice as the speaker, but he calls himself people of the pavement. So he speaks for a lot of others. So you get to know that the speaker is comparatively poor and he feels that Richard Corey is out of his range in terms of his status and his accomplishments, the way he's admired and everything. So he goes on about how they all wished for Richard Corey's life. They all thought they would be happy if only they could exchange places with Richard Corey. And they kept cursing their own poverty. They kept cursing their own hardships, not realizing that Richard Corey might probably be going through something on his own. But the poem ends with this dramatic last two lines where one calm summer night, Richard Corey shoots himself and dies. So as you can see, the poem tells you a very dramatic story. And the drama comes from the fact that there is a stark difference between appearance versus reality. So on the surface, it appears as though Richard Corey has got everything that any human being could wish for. But what secret sorrow he harbors is not known to anyone. So therefore, the poem drive home, drives home the idea that appearances can be deceptive. Uh, Closely related idea is that wealth does not guarantee happiness. Richard Corey had good looks. Richard Corey had a, a huge wardrobe. He had riches more than a king. And he was admired by everyone. He was a gentleman. He was uh, graceful in his behavior. He was admired and envied by everyone. So all of this does not finally mean that you are happy. We do not know what exactly drove him to his death. But there is a hint from the fact that people either seem to admire him or envy him. So um, we think of admiration as a positive emotion and envy as a sort of negative emotion. But what they both have in common is that they isolate a person they make somebody different from 
all of you. And so, in a way, all the envy and admiration ultimately ended up making Richard Corey some kind of an isolated figure. So probably we can speculate on what was the cause of his sorrow. And maybe it was loneliness. Loneliness that probably comes from being rich. Maybe he lacked good friends. We do not know. The author does not tell us. And that is where he leaves things to our interpretation. So I hope you all enjoyed this poem. And when it comes to literary devices, the poem is quite simple, you know, when it uh, uses certain similes. Okay. Um, you, lo you look at imperially slim. Uh, that's a description of how he was like royalty. Um, you have the repeated use of and to build on to a dramatic effect of his description. And finally, you have that dramatic reveal about how we have been misled into believing in everything that the speaker has been saying. We have been looking at everything only from the speaker's point of view, but there's probably another point of view hidden from us. So these are some of the things you can understand from the poem Richard Cole. And if you have any questions, you can always mail me. Thank you.